Today, I'm going to turn these hay bales into my garden space. Hi, I'm Amy. Welcome back to Hummingbird Hill and today I'm going to get started turning those hay bales into the place that I'm going to grow about half of my garden this year. If you've seen my earlier videos, you know I've been trying to figure out what to do with this end of the garden which does not have raised beds and because I planted in all my raised beds I couldn't move things around the way I wanted to last fall so I was left trying to figure out what to do down here. I laid some cardboard down and was still looking for a solution that would allow me to plant but also help manage weeds. And since I had some extra hay bales around this year that we did not use for animals, I thought that I would be using them for growing. Today I'm going to start about a 10 to 18 day process to condition these bales and make them ready to plant. So I thought I'd just get started and let you watch what I'm doing. I'll show a little snippet from each day because otherwise that would be a really long video. So I'm just going to go grab my bone meal and what I'm going to do today is add three cups to each bale, water them really good, and then I will be back tomorrow for the next step. Here we go. Okay, I've got my bone meal and I have got my measuring cup and so I'm just going to get to work sprinkling and watering and then I will check back in with you tomorrow about the next step. Okay, I'm just going to finish up watering, but that is the end of day one of turning these hay bales into raised beds. I will see you tomorrow. And there's my dad. Hey everybody, happy trails. See you later, Papa. See ya. Papa's been helping me put in the other arched panels down at the raised bed end of the garden. And I'm down here, if you can hear in the background, watering the hay bales 
so that they are conditioned. So this is the second day of the conditioning process. Day one, I added bone meal to every bale, watered that in. Today, I am watering it in. Tomorrow, it's bone meal again. So I'm really excited about this. Um, it looks pretty cool. The question is, will I do it right so I grow as many vegetables as I possibly can? So let me just swing you around. It's super bright down on the arched end of the, not the arched end, I just put in two arches um, on the raised bed end of the garden, which is why I'm hiding down here under the shade of the tree um, while I am watering. And actually I'm not watering, I just put the hose on the bales and we'll see how that goes. Here is what the straw bales are looking like right now. So one of the things I am most excited about are the cattle panel trellises. Now if you follow Roots and Refuge, that's where I actually first saw the cattle panel arches in play. And now I've seen them in a bunch of other people's. Um, cattle panel is just super sturdy and I am so excited about having some place, oh, there I'm in the sun again. I'm so excited about having some place to grow all my climbing veggies that will not fall over, twist, warp, etc. I've been using, you know, old school tomato cages and they do not contain tomatoes, especially because I didn't ever prune a tomato until last year. So I am really excited about using these arch trellises. Now, trellises, coming down this way, <coughs> I've decided I'm only going to have the hay bales on one side of the inside of the trellis. I'll plant the climbing veggies there, but it's a little narrow and if I need to get a garden cart through here, I can't. Look, I'm going to feel all sassy walking under there in the summer. Pardon me, hold on a sec. <coughs> um, and now I have just put in the three tall pieces of cattle panel at the end where I'm going to grow tomatoes up and then two arches here in the center. The two arches in the center may be just a little bit of overkill, um, but we'll see. Again, I'm going to be rearranging the whole garden next fall. All of this is an experiment and I figure I might as well try. So I am really excited about this and Thank goodness dad came out and helped me because it would have taken me much longer to get the really tall T-posts in by myself. But yeah, I'm super excited. That's just kind of what today is, is doing a little bit of projecty kind of stuff. A little update on the straw bale, hay bales, straw bales, hay bales. They're hay for me, but most people use straw. You use what you have, I guess. And I had some extra hay laying around. So I am just gonna keep on working. I've got some things to work on in my strawberry patch, which I talked about earlier before I forgot. Um, except yeah, I forgot to plug in my microphone. So I don't know if you could hear any of that. Sometimes the sound is really weird on my iPhone because it's an iPhone. In any case, I'm gonna get back to work. Thank you so much for joining me here on Hummingbird Hill and just coming along as I'm doing some chores and getting some things done here because it is spring and it is gorgeous and there is so much to do. I know I said I couldn't wait for spring, but now I already feel like I'm behind. Ah. Hey YouTube, it's day three of the conditioning process for my straw bales and as you can see, it's raining outside, so I don't have to worry so much about the water, but I still need to get the fertilizer on. And that's gonna be difficult with the umbrella, which I have because of my camera. So I'm gonna put the umbrella and the camera down and get to work. Hay bale conditioning, update day four, adding more water. And I actually forgot these two bales yesterday, so I'm gonna have to give them some more fertilizer because I skipped that step. These are right by the front gate and there's a weedy patch here. I'm actually gonna move these and put some cardboard under them just to help with the containment. Um, but the goal today is to get all of the bales a ton of water. I think I need a couple of gallons per bale, um, which with the hose, I'm not sure exactly how that measures out. I'm just gonna get them really wet and that will help them in the conditioning process. So I will keep you updated on how that goes and you'll see this whole video all together, all at once, when I edit it.
We need to reconsider free range chickens. This has never happened until this year. But every time I come out here, these little rascals, led by Snap, Crackle was already smart enough to get out of the garden. Come on, Nibs, out. Uh, are in the garden. And so far they have not get, gotten into my raised beds, which is good because they'd be chicken dinner. Someone said chicken dinner. Um, but this kind of shenanigan has got to stop, Miss Nibbles. You too, Snappy Crackle. Day five or six. I think I lost count somewhere, but it's the third day of fertilizing. So I'm out here working on adding fertilizer to the bales and making sure they get nice and soaked, despite the fact that it is cloudy and has rained today. It has not rained enough to really soak the bales. So I'm out here getting that done and trying to figure out how to keep my rascal chickens who have never invaded the garden the way they have already this spring out of the garden. Just a quick update and again I'll be putting this all together so that you can see the process and how things turn out with the bales. Day six out in the garden conditioning the hay bales for growing in this summer. Today is all about the water and since it is super cloudy and dark out it has already had one downpour um, and it looks like we are due for another ish i'm hoping that will be enough water because i would prefer not to have to water today but i'm keeping an eye on it so if things don't get if things don't get quite wet enough, I will come out later and throw some more water on the bales. Some of the bales are heating up beautifully and some towards the ends of the garden, maybe a place where I get tired of watering and don't give it enough water, are not quite as warm. So I'm definitely gonna have to check all of the bales before I start planting anywhere so that I make sure they are properly conditioned and aren't going to heat up when my seeds are inside of them because that would kill the new baby plants. So, um, we're gonna head in today. I may come out and water later, but right now I'm gonna go have some dinner and then get to work on some seed transplanting inside. Day six, update, here we go. It's day seven here in the hay bale garden experiment. The raised bed end of the garden is looking great. I have some more plants that are coming up and some more plants I need to put in this weekend. But day seven here means that I am adding one and a half cups of fertilizer. In this case, I'm adding some blood meal um, to get more nitrogen in. It is um, just that part of the process. I'm gonna also water in a little bit. Day six, I didn't have to do the watering because the rain did it for me. Ooh, these, I just got their mud. I can see it says bud, bum. Well, it's mud. In any case, um, <laughs> I just got those for two pairs for like $4, but they have a touch screen finger so I can actually touch the phony thing while I'm out here in the garden, as long as I don't have anything yucky on the fingers. So far, so good. Um, but right now, all I'm doing is I'm using my new pitchfork because my old one got broken because um, it was really old. So <laughs> I had to get a new pitchfork. And I'm just using it to slightly separate the bales as I put in the dry meal. Um, it would be ideal, obviously, if I had some liquid bone meal, blood meal, whatever, could find it easily that wasn't super expensive, um, but I don't. So I'm putting in dry and I'm just using my pitchfork pitchfork um, to help get things settled in. I also just got last night Christine over at Straw Bale Garden um, Australia just sent me her book that she is working on about it's actually her second edition I think she's working on about straw bale gardening and I gave that a quick read today and that was super fun to see so thank you Christine you are awesome I can't wait to really dig in the book and go step by step and figure out all the mistakes I made I'm especially fond of the page that lists all the possible fungus or fungi or fungi that can grow and that I shouldn't be afraid of because after all they just add more nutrients to the soil in any case, I'm going to get back to adding my fertilizer here and I will put this all together 
in the update coming up next week. Hey, it's Amy. It's day eight of the straw bale gardening conditioning process. That was a lot of ings. The straw bale garden conditioning process. Let's try that. And today is all about making sure the bales are wet and happy. So that's what I'm doing right now before I go head out and work on the Weedy Hill. Take care of some stuff over there that I am going to be updating you on in an upcoming video. But day eight of the process just involves watering every single one of these happy little bales to make sure that they stay nice and moist and get ready. I'm also checking heat levels. I don't know if you can see this, hold on. Ah. Um, heat levels on them. This bill is 100. Let's take this and go over here. This bill um, definitely, I think, should be a little hotter. Let's see if that heats up a little. It's thinking about it. We won't watch it. But one of the things that I am noticing, and you might have noticed them flying around too, is there are some black flies flying around, um, which I didn't know was really kind of part of the process of conditioning the hay or straw bales for planting in. The fungus, I guess, the decomposition process creates some sugars that the flies are attracted to. They should go away as the bales start to cool down, but that is something that I'll definitely, that it's good to know, that it's not just me, um, but that I'll definitely keep in mind as I work on straw bales or hay bales again if I continue this process. Right now, I'm super excited about the potential that this garden has to produce, and for me, it's just cost me a few, let's see, money for a few bags of fertilizer to help in the conditioning process, which is a lot cheaper than it would have been to get soil in here to plant in raised beds this year. So right now, it's a great, solution and I look forward to keeping you updated on how this is going the rest of the summer. Hey, it's Amy here on Hummingbird Hill and I just wanted to give you a quick update on day nine. <laughs> Five, nine, there we go, math. Don't have enough fingers when I'm holding the phone. Of the hay bale conditioning process. Today was the last day I'll be adding fertilizer. I've been checking the bales and most of them are hot. There are a couple that are not hot yet and aren't even at steady. Of course that could be because I just dumped a bunch of water and some fertilizer on them. Um, in this case, it was fish fertilizer. Uh, so not sure exactly about that, but I'm gonna have to keep track of it. I'm a little concerned because we are heading for about a week of rain and I'm worried that that rain is gonna slow down the heating process and make it harder for me to plant. Ideally, I'd be able to plant in those bales down there by next Saturday. They should have cooled off enough by then. I'm worried if they cool off with the rain, it's gonna be kind of a false cool off and that they will continue then to compost and heat up again. The trouble with that is, is that if they get hot when the plants are growing in the bales, they will then fry the roots of those tender little plants. So I'm gonna to have to do a little research about that and figure that out, but I'd figure, but I figured, huh, it's been a long day. I've been working on the hill and in the garden, <laughs> so I can't really talk right now. I think I need some water. Um, but I just figured I'd give you a quick little update. I'm super excited to have so much done. Things are looking great. Last night I did have to spray in the garden with some BT because I have some insect issues and they were, my poor little radish that was coming up has been eaten. So yeah. Um, may have to replant some of my earlier seeds. I'm gonna wait until this week of rain kind of goes by and see if things recover, but there have been some insects. So I sprayed some BT. Oh my gosh, cat. <laughs> there, there's a cat who's trying to say hello. You wanna? Come on, Harley. Okay, okay, okay. Well, okay, here. Do you wanna say hello? Mm. She's too busy purring to actually say hello. Um, any case, been out here working a ton, gonna head inside, gotta get ready for work tomorrow, but I just wanted to give you a quick update. I hope everything is going beautifully in your garden and that you got a ton of work done this weekend. I know some of you are in areas of the country that still have snow and I am so sorry about that. Hopefully that stuff melts soon so you can get out in your gardens. 
I finished the condi conditioning process yesterday and actually it was super easy to finish up because it rained so I didn't have to come out and water, which is excellent. But I am a little worried about the fact that there is rain in the forecast for the next week and a half. I could cover up the bales conceivably, but as you can see, they are not really laid out um, for ease in covering with plastic or tarps. If I have to resort to garbage bags, I do have some large leaf bags I can try out. But right now, it's been raining steadily, but not super hard. And I think that keeping the bales moist is a huge part of this process. So for now, I'm gonna hold off on trying to tarp the bales and wait to see what happens. It is actually gorgeous right now. I'm out here in a little break between the weather. It's sprinkling on me, but not enough to keep me inside. And I'm just checking things out. I've noticed that I, my salary that I moved is actually doing well. I've seen that I do have some more things like my radishes and such coming up, but I do still need to keep an eye on those because my biggest radish leaf, the top is all eaten off and something has gotten it. Like I said, I tried some BT a few days ago and I'm gonna have to keep an eye on that. I may need to break out some neem oil if I have to. Um, while I do appreciate that those substances, they're still chemicals, are approved for organic gardening, they do have some detrimental effects on bees. So last year, I didn't use any BT, I used a little bit of neem oil, but obviously this winter has not been harsh enough to kill off bugs. My brassicas were decimated over the winter and whatever was decimating those is already starting in on my other plants. So I'm gonna have to do something because I really want my vegetables to, you know, produce things I can eat, but I also wanna be mindful of the rest of the insects that I want to keep around. So it's kind of a fine line and I'm still working out what to do. Um, but I do have, you can't see it really unless I point you out super close. I do have some more um, or rock growing up over here. Let's see, look right there. Oh, it's look, it's the little red stem. It's so cute. Uh, the Aurora rock has so many colors on its package. I can't wait to see what it actually looks like as it grows. There's some green right there. Um, because I'm super excited about the development. I hope that you are super excited about things growing in your garden, that you're able to get out there and get started. I know some of you are in still in places that are covered with snow. <sighs> I cannot wait to see your gardens and I feel for you because I am so excited finally to be outside. For the most part right now, most of the bales are around hot in the hot composting region. Some are down here in active. As you can see, I've been digging in the dirt, which is why my hands always look pathetic in the summertime. I really need to wear gloves. But so far, the bales are looking awesome, so I don't think I need to tarp them. I will keep an eye on them over the next few days. It's Amy here out in the garden. As you can see, it is a gorgeous rainy day and basically we've got a flood going on. I had to put on my high boots to walk into the garden because my normal garden mucky shoes were way too low and were going to get my feet soaked. Uh, right now, I just wanted to give you a quick update on how the hay bale end of the garden is looking. I came out and You'll see a little bit more about why they're covered up in my next video, but I came out to get finished up after I put in the last day's worth of fertilizer for some potassium and some phosphorus. I added a little wood ash and some more bone meal just to finish up that conditioning. I was gonna say composting and conditioning at the same time, and apparently that's not a word that's gonna roll off my tongue. Um, to finish up that conditioning process. This is an experiment I'm really excited to try. I'm so interested in turning this space that I have here into something that is sustainable, manageable, and hopefully in the future profitable. That's the goal anyway. I hope that you'll come around more as I progress through the summer and see how both the raised bed end and the hay bale end of the garden are going. It's so exciting for me just to be outside again. Oh, there goes the weed whacker. It's going to start up. Um, even if in the rain, we still have to get things done. 
you know about the weed issue here. Uh, so I really appreciate you joining me on this journey in the garden and I hope that you will come back again so that we can do some more growing, experimenting, and maybe planning together. <laughs>